Are you happy that EU is getting a new DC? Oh, Eric Kaiba, I'm so glad you asked because that's what I want to talk about before we get started here today. Uh, well, not specifically about EU's new DC, but a little bit. I wanted to talk about some of what I had mentioned in my last video that I just posted uh, yesterday. Put the link in the chat. Is Bun Police here? Yes. Yeah, so I made a video for last week where I talked about uh, the new news about the new servers, about the big server news. And uh, in this video, there was something that it, it caused me to pause and reflect on this issue that I had not paused and reflected on before. Uh, if you watch the video, you see the moment where I'm like, oh, oh, all right. And what I'm talking about is the fact that they are thinking about not adding region visit for the data center visit system, like cross region visit because of their concerns about culture classes. Uh, Yoshida specifically said about the differences in economy and values, game economy and values. And uh, it, it like I, I guess I never really thought about it before, uh, but it occurred to me then that that could be a potential problem in having a region visit. Because previously I had been like all aboard the region visit train. And honestly, I still kind of am. Like I still kind of do think that in spite of everything they should, they should go ahead and do it. But I spent some time today trying to dig a little deeper into this and I was hoping that we could talk about it too. Maybe some of you have some insight that I don't. I know that you often do. So first of all, yes, they're adding the new Oceanic DC, which it's great news. It's fantastic. But I think this issue of region visit or not does affect players who are considering transferring to Oceania if they happen to be in that region. Because I mean, first you have to ask yourself, well, how active is it going to be? Because are players who are physically in the Oceana region going to be willing to part with longtime friends that they have in their current DCs? Like we have these bonds that we've built over years and years that I think a lot of people will not be super eager to break just for the sake of ping. You know, like I think if I were in that situation, I would really struggle. I would I would probably struggle up until the last second. It really depends a lot, I think, on what kind of content you do, because in my case, I do a lot of high-end rating. Ping is really important to me, and I would probably make the switch if it were me, like if I were physically in Oceania. But I don't know. It, it's definitely not easy. I don't know. It, I, I'm kind of going back and forth on it, and it's not even an issue that I personally will have to, to deal with. I mean, I think having the cross-region travel implemented would make this so much easier for people who are in that situation. They won't have to stress about it as much because they'll go, oh, I'll go to the Oceana server that's new. I'll have amazing thing and I can go visit my friends anytime. I think that's uh, a massive, massive benefit of having this feature available and it really can't be overlooked with the addition of Oceana DC. In the case of the Oceanic server being opened, I know that they are going to be trying to lure people there that are I guess a lot of people are firmly established el elsewhere. They're gonna try to lure people there with the transfer incentives, the new character creation incentives. I think if you make a new character there, you can, if you make a new character and you level it up to level 30, you get 15 days of free play time, which is significant considering it takes way less than uh, 15 days to get to level 30. I wonder if there's gonna be people that will go there just to get level 30 in a free, 15 days of playtime. I mean, but uh, there's also, of course, the guilt compensation if you leave behind your house or apartment. That's the thing that I think, if I were in their shoes, that's something that would delay my decision a lot because I have my house. I really would not want to give up my, my house plot here on Phoenix. It's the reason why I, I won't transfer for an FC. I will not transfer at all, ever, no matter what, because I have my house. And, um, it doesn't matter to me, and I mentioned this in my video that I posted last week, it doesn't matter to me if they give me the guild compensation for the house, because it's not about guild. It's about that opportunity that's very difficult 
to find. And actually, I'm now that I'm thinking about it, with an oceanic data center, there's gonna be tons of worlds with all fresh, completely empty housing wards. I feel like there might be players who don't care about ping at all, who might just go over there simply for the purpose of getting a house finally. Like maybe a, maybe a player who's um, more or less a casual mindset player who only cares about glamor and crafting and like, <laughs> maybe they'll be like, oh, that's fresh meat. House, houses. Yeah. Regarding the Japanese DC, I found this post that talks about the differences in the different data centers, like between the Western data center and the Japanese data center. And uh, some of this seemed a little bit difficult for me to believe, because I had been trying to, I've actually been trying to do some uh, digging to get more of an understanding of how region visit could affect us. And I saw this post. Now tell me if any of this is bullshit, please. Because some of this I was like, what? Okay. Uh, so this was actually from six months ago. Somebody asked the question, "What's the? is there a big difference in social culture between Western servers and JP servers? And this is relevant to the discussion we're having right now. And this comment said, first of all, JP has a lot of pug clears because the end game rating strat is about consistency than personal glory. The strat may not have the best uptime, but it's proven to be universally doable by DF and gets the clears. Uh, so this is true in EU. I don't know how it is in NA, uh, but this is what we do as well. Like the, the strat that Party Finder settles on is gonna be the one that gets the most success and the most consistency. Uh, communication is not needed for clears. Not always. Uh, usually if we have the macro, we can just post that. <laughs> Which, I mean, I actually, I forgot to put this in my video. I forgot to put this in my video. Oh, can I find it or did I lose it? Oh no, here it is. Yeah, this post. <laughs> it's like, how do you guys live without macros? <laughs> and it's just like, insert convoluted 10 minute conversation after standing around a bunch of markers. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh man. Anyway, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, okay, let me put that, put it back. Anyway, uh, I think that, like I said, in PF, we tend to settle for the strat that has the most consistency. So I think it's the same here. Uh, but they did say the strat is posted, we call out positions, then we do the fight. Nobody's gonna debate that X strat is better than Y. Now this is the part that's different. Uh, we will <laughs> still, <coughs> like, we are still going to debate about it and complain about it. Like there's, there's still going to be somebody that will complain if it's not optimal. They'll go along with the PF strat, but to make themselves like, to let everybody know that they know what they're doing and that they're God gamer, they'll let everybody know that uh, this strat sucks. I mean, but we're all just, we all know that we're going to continue and do the PF strat anyway. The average, <laughs> the average JP players are better in Dungeon Finder because they bring a sense of responsibility and accountability. Nobody likes standing out in Asian society and certainly not for being a menace. I have heard this. I haven't lived in Japan. I haven't played on JP, so I cannot confirm whether or not this is a stereotype, but uh, I'm like asking myself, am I? I'm not a, I'm not a menace, okay? I, I try to, okay, I, I make an effort. And uh, <laughs> the Zephyla difficulty is, it means it's easier because I'm there to help. Optimization is nice, but they will let you carry on at your own pace. <laughs> People often mention that JP servers don't pull wall to wall, but this is incorrect. We do, it's just that nobody's gonna shit on you if you prefer not to. I'm <laughs> just having flashbacks to my scholar experience. Just really quickly. So I went to expert as a scholar because I played summoner um, more, but I did not ever play scholar, but I wanted the quick cue. So I got into expert and I'm like, wall to wall, go for it. I know what I'm doing. I don't. And <laughs> it was Smileton. We wiped on the first pack. <laughs> we wiped on the first pack and 
I felt so bad. I felt so bad. But nobody shit on me for it. Except I, I, I did though. I, <laughs> I don't want to say like I shit on myself because it sounds really gross. But you know what I'm saying. I, I felt bad about that. Uh, same way, people will carry you through content as long as you don't make this about yourself. You are allowed to be bad as long as you being bad isn't detrimental. Failure is a shared responsibility by the team. Now this is really wild to me. Failure is absolutely not a shared responsibility over in EU. If you're failing, you're the failure. We're all good. You're the one that's usually seen as the failure. We, in no universe could I imagine everybody feeling like we're failing. That guy's doing really low damage and that guy's standing in every AOE. So it's like, we're failing together collectively. We are standing in all of the AOEs. Otherwise, yes, JP will also kick you from the party. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Can't imagine this like. Uh, if the <laughs> in NA we have to take time out to assign blame. You know it's coming too. Okay, you know it's coming. You know if you did it. You're just waiting for somebody to call you out. And usually, like, I'm surprised if no one did, but we're all thinking it. We're all thinking it. The thing is, there's a nice way to call someone out. There's a nice way to explain something, and there's a wrong way to explain something that you would know if you have general common sense. People will wait for you to watch cutscenes. Now, this is absolutely true. This, will, this is absolutely true here in the uh, in EU, at least. 24 man raid with only one new person. Yeah. People will get mad at the person that pulled if there's somebody watching the cutscene. Talking in public simply isn't done. Conversations are limited to Link Shell, FC, and the like. It's all very quiet. That is really strange. I actually also heard that on JP servers, um, using shout and yell in the major city is not okay. Like, to just to chat and, like, say random stuff. Like, in the, like, if you, you could just go into any major city in e EU and just shout, but, 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 and no one would even think twice about it. It's just like, oh, the like guy's just shouting, but, 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 and it's just ordinary. Uh, but that's, it's like super, that's a no-no. You're not supposed to be doing that. No, no shout, no yell, unless you're using it for like announcing at your FC advertisement or announcing a hunt train or something. Yeah. Yeah. And in A, we call yell piss chat. What? <laughs> yeah, somebody was like, no pee chat. And I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? Piss chat? <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, that was so distracting. I forgot where, where we were on this. It's really pissed. I did not know that. Don't tell EU. They're going to start calling it that, too. <laughs> so, there is significantly less gold selling activity. Actually, I've seen way less gold selling activity since N. Walker came around. I can't remember the last time I've seen a bot for gold selling. I haven't seen it. I used to see it all the time. Now it's way less, so I guess they're doing something right. Dungeon runs are also very quiet outside of the salutations and farewells and nobody really talks. Oh, I mean, it's pretty much the same everywhere. But I've noticed if you're in a dungeon run and you start any kind of conversation at all, like you say anything or you make any kind of joke or say anything like that, you will get all the commendations. People actually love it. But nobody wants to be the one to start the conversation. At least that is how, what it's like here. If you DC, they will wait until you come back up to 10 minutes if your internet shied itself. Perhaps you'll even find yourself alone at the end of the dungeon that has been cleared. Um, this is very iffy. Like, this is a very party by party basis, right? Like, if it's the healer that left, people might wait like five minutes. 10 is kind of pushing it. Yeah, yeah, Techie Sama said, in EU, it feels like people wait five. Yeah, everybody's like, 10 minutes, that's so long. <laughs> I'm so glad, like, we all, we all agree. 10 minutes is twice as long as you need to wait. 
<laughs> five minutes. That's how long you get. We'll wait five minutes, kick you, and then wait ten minutes to get the replacement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, nowadays, you need like an hour to get back after the queue, after you've been DC'd. Or you just give... Actually, when the queues are really bad, if someone DC'd, you're like, oh, well, that's it. We're disbanding. We can't wait. There's no need to wait now. So... All very interesting stuff. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this is generally right? Do you think this is generally accurate? I feel like... Mm, there is a little bit of a tendency, at least in my experience, for players to idolize the JP community and say, like, they're basically Chad gamers and they're excellent at working together and they're just better at the game and it's like the uh the meme with the the chad dog and teams by it We're, we are more like a teams over here in eu but there are plenty of bad jp players don't worry do you think it's generally accurate i um wait a second yeah okay so i found this too this is a little bit outdated but it's not that outdated it's from stormblood era so, uh, this is from a JP blog that was talking about how, <clears throat> how the JP audience felt about Eureka. Now, this is right after Eureka came out. And if you were around during that time, Eureka was extremely grindy, extremely boring, and uh, rather poorly received here in the West, here in the EU at least. And I think NA also kind of felt the same way that we did about it. And uh, there was a poll where it seemed like 57% of the people that had responded to this poll on the JP blog said that it was fun and they actually liked it, which I was really shocked by because at the time, like if you weren't there, it's hard to realize how badly this content was received in the West. Like I remember people, the only people that were defending it at the time were people who were like, oh yeah, it's really, really boring, but if you do it with friends and you're all chatting and having fun in Discord, it's not so bad. And that's that's not that's not really a good way <laughs> to defend a content. It's like, oh well, when we provide our own content on top of it, it's actually pretty fun. But anyway, in this comment, the uh, OP said like Yoshida said and Yoshida uncensored, which I'd never heard of before today. A lot of the JP players level all jobs to seventy and also have their crafters and gatherers level. He commented on how JP players love leveling and are starving for it. I think this poll result shows a difference between JP and NAEU audience. Yoshina also said that NAEU players do not have most jobs level to max level. And he explained how the requirements for mentors are so little because only a small minority from the Western audience would be able to be a mentor if they lifted the requirements. <laughs> um, that's what I was talking about uh, with the team's analogy where they have all their jobs max and the mentor requirements are low so that it can accommodate the western players yeah yeah actually these are a couple of quotes from this let me see if i can find the one that's relevant here i haven't looked here yet <laughs> Oof. this is so much I, this is too much to read it was truly boring at lower levels it was only becomes fun after you level up and have more freedom with where you can go jp players obviously like being hamsters compared to players overseas. That's horrible. Look, Yoshida said this. I'm quote, this is a quote from Yoshida. This is what he said. This is what he said. I didn't say that. If you'd asked me if it was fun or not, I'd have to say no. Ah! Uh, <laughs> what? I found a little, a little snippet here that I thought was relevant too. If I can't find it. Oh yeah. Okay, so in this, he said, 
We're just regarding the differences in NA, EU, and JP. Japanese people seem to be bad at praise. In other cultures, like American culture, people praise each other when results are produced. And at the same time, bad results are pointed out. Now this is very true in a dungeon environment. And we talked about it earlier. Like if you're doing bad, you're gonna be told that you were doing bad. But if you're doing great, you're also gonna be told that you're doing great. The latter can be a heated discussion for both sides, but it's more of a ritual to assure that the same mistake won't happen again. Afterwards, they continue to work together as normal. The way they respect each other and return to peace at the end is more noticeable than it is here. Japanese people value consideration for others over all else, and foreign countries often revere our sensitivity. But if you respect others too much, then you won't point out their mistakes. You won't criticize them face to face, but you won't praise them either. Lately, I've sensed that this could be a stressful environment to live in. This might be connected to our culture of flaming people when things go wrong on the internet. I think that's very interesting. <sighs> Price in a dungeon? Not in a dungeon, but I mean like in something where everybody has to make an effort, like an extreme trial or everything's like, for example, if you're in an extreme trial and you've done a couple of pulls and then you made a ton of progress, and everybody just made a ton of progress, there's always gonna be someone that's like, wow, that was great, we did a great job keep going, like that was a great first pull, or that was a great second pull. Like if things are going well, you're gonna hear the praise and the acknowledgement of that. Sounds like we'd all learn from each other. It does sound like that, doesn't it? That's that's the uh, feeling that I got as well. And uh, yes, I think that there would obviously be some points that would be uh, sort of growing pains and would be difficult to adjust to in the beginning, but I think overall, it could be really fun. It could be really nice to let people at least visit, at least do the region visit. I think maybe we could all learn a little bit from each other. And I think that it would be better to have the region visit than not, because not just that, but Oceana, Oceanic DC, if you really want people to migrate over there that are in the Oceanic region, that are committed players, established players, it's going to be so much easier for them <laughs> if they have the option to still visit the friends that they have made in the other regions. So yeah, that's my take on all that.